Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for attending the first Tiol Development Live Market Briefing dedicated to the Compound Semiconductor Market. My name is David Jordan, I am Global Sales Support and Coordination Manager for Yol Development. So based on our Compound Semiconductor Monitors, this live briefing will provide you a 30 minute up-to-date analysis of the market. We will also focus on the COVID-19 impacts. Our compound semiconductor experts, Esgi Dogmus and Ahmed Ben Sliman from your development, will examine the changes to our market outlook in the context of our prior forecast and present what they see as the most likely outcome during this very uncertain time. So before we get started, I remind you that you can submit questions to our analysts during all the live meetings using the ask a question window at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we will answer right after the presentation as many questions as we can. For the remaining questions, uh, we will follow up by email with you. To conclude, this live event is recorded and you will receive tomorrow the link to access the recorded session. So, let's start the webcast and welcome Esgi and Amit. Uh, thank you, David. My name is Esgi. Uh, it's good, uh, good morning or good afternoon to, to everyone. And it's a pleasure for me to co-animate this uh, live market briefing with my colleague Ahmed. So we will share uh, with you very, very recent market analysis of the compound semiconductors, the silicon carbide and gallium nitride following the COVID-19 outbreak. And speaking of the compound semiconductors, I think you, here you see the list of materials that we cover in our activity. So we can say that we tackle the, the main established semiconductors such as the silicon carbide, gallium nitride, gallium arsenide, and indium phosphide. But we also track the, the latest developments, um, also the value chain of the emerging semiconductor substrates that you see here, uh, such as the bulk gallium nitride, gallium oxide, diamond, and engineered substrates. So today's topic is the two key semiconductors, the silicon carbide and gallium nitride for power electronic industry, and our analysis uh, by taking into account this COVID-19 pandemic impact. So let's start. So let me first give you some uh, insights on the global power electronic market. Uh, we can say that over the last decade, there has been a penetration of many emerging applications that you are seeing here. And the, the important thing is that I think they are boosted by some several mega trends that we also see here, such as the, the climate change, the digitalization, the mobility, but there are also um, things like governmental subventions or new adjacent application needs. And you can say that these led to emergence of the new segments, such as the, the electric and hybrid electric vehicles, the charging infrastructure, or efficient uh, uninterruptible supplies or the data centers. But to meet the requirements of all these markets, some needs have to be fulfilled that you see on the right side of the screen. So these would be the high efficiency, uh, low cost, uh, small size, where the, the white band gaps, silicon carbide and gallium nitride are of great interest. This is due to, this is thanks to also their intrinsic properties, we can say. And over the last years, you can say that regarding the other aspects, such as the integration, the supply chain and reliability, the white band gaps have done great efforts. So as many of you are already familiar, I think the, the white band gap materials um, are in competition with the traditional silicon based devices. Uh, here, as you see, over a large power versus frequency range. So the, the silicon carbide is of interest for high voltage and high power applications, and it's in competition with the silicon IGBT. While the gallium nitride is, has a sweet, sweet spot for low voltage and high frequency applications where it competes with the MOSFET. Both silicon carbide and gallium nitride better, uh, face a battle zone, uh, let's say for the applications such as the photovoltaics, the, the EVHEV, the, the power supplies, UPS. And in this talk, we will focus on the, the EVHEV applications, which drive the, the power, the silicon, silicon carbide power market. 
So now let's understand how actually. And as all you know, the, the electric vehicle is a mega trend and its adoption has accelerated over the, the last years, creating new uh, opportunities for the semiconductor devices and also for the wide band gap. And for the electric vehicles, we can say that the one of the key target uh, is to maximize the driving range. And of course, by also reducing the system cost. So to do so, we have identified five different approaches that the OEMs are adapting today. So this would be, as you see, the, the larger battery capacity. It can be also higher uh, voltage batteries, such as 800 volt batteries. It can be also high efficiency DC-DC conversion, the, the inverters, let's say, and also the high efficiency AC motors and the reduced loads, as you see in the fifth uh, item. And here we see two big market opportunities for silicon carbon. But the first one could be, as we see here on the third case, in the, in the green uh, box here. I think many of you are already familiar that Tesla has already demonstrated in its Model 3 uh, that the silicon carbide can really enable high power density and reduced system size. And in parallel, we also have Toyota, who has chosen using a boost converter at the inverter level in order to increase the electrical circuitry voltage. So this would also reduce the, the form factor of the fuel cell stack and the motor. And this is a segment where silicon carbide is really of great interest. And the second market opportunity for the silicon carbide here we see is as, as in the second case in the, the yellow box, let's say. And here the idea is to increase the battery voltage to 800 volts. So this will also boost the driving range and also enable the fast charging, such as in the case of Porsche Taycan. And this is a segment where we also see 1200 volt silicon carbide, which will have a great interest for deployment in the next, in the next years. So now let's have a look at the market forecast for silicon carbide device in near term. So historically, the silicon carbide device was dominated by the power supply and the photovoltaic inverter applications. And since the silicon carbide adoption of Tesla in its main inverters, we see a change in the market dynamics starting from the 2018. So since then, we see that the automotive segment really became a significant source of revenue for the silicon carbide devices. So this year, following the COVID-19 outbreak, we have seen the lockdown measures uh, by, from many car OEMs, mainly in March and April. And as a consequence, uh, compared to our uh, previous forecast in Q1 20, 2020 this year, we expect that the power sick device market growth will slow down in Q2 and Q3 this year. But we can also expect some um, delays in silicon carbide adoption in short term. But in our, in our understanding, the Q4 will, can be a strong quarter, mainly owing to Tesla. So the car OEM could really benefit from its uh, plans in the US and also China in order to recover rapidly. So obviously, the 2020 is a um, dynamic year, and there has been many unexpected global events, such as the COVID-19 impact. So we will continue tracking the market by taking into account um, any further changes at the micro or the macro scale. But we can say that the automotive, the EVHEV market, is really the main driver, and it's extremely important to watch it in the next quarters for the sick power devices. Yes, uh, for Gallium Nitride, uh, let's have a look for uh, the fast charger application. So um, to explain the fast charger application, we have to look at the phone. So for the phones, it's, a, it's, an, um, it's an ever evolving application uh, where we see for 5G push with uh, lots of data coming in in the phone, uh, the expansion of the phone uh, display, um, there is a need of uh, extending the battery life and there is a need of uh, uh, higher power in the phone. But, uh, but in the end customer, uh, we have a problem with the, with the, with the charging. So the, it, it delays the charging. The charging time, it's, it's even longer. And uh, thus, reducing the charging time has become a crucial parameter for OEMs. And 
this is the need for a fast charger uh, trend. So lowering the, the, the charger time becomes uh, a need in this, uh, in this application. Uh, if, if we take a look at, uh, at the competition uh, between, uh, between different uh, power fast chargers, we find uh, silicon and gallium nitride. The trend here is uh, to reduce the size of fast charger and to reduce uh, the price per power. So we are looking for, for devices that have a higher power density and high efficiency and small form factor. As you can see, uh, gallium nitride um, uh, fulfill all these needs uh, and it goes uh, even uh, further than silicon uh, for, for, for reaching these performances. We have seen these in the aftermarket chargers, uh, starting from uh, Q, uh, Q4 2018, with different uh, major brands are going for gallium nitride devices. And then there was an even uh, push from, uh, from, uh, from OEMs where we had uh, Huawei and Samsung and Xiaomi uh, choosing accessory chargers with gallium nitride uh, in it. And recently we have seen in uh, in Q4 2019, uh, where Oppo opted for an inbox fast charger with gallium nitride, and recently uh, in Q1 and Q2 2020, where Realme and Vivo uh, opted for gallium nitride also. The main players uh, producing this gallium nitride uh, fast charger uh, are uh, Navitas and Power Integrations, and we have seen InnoScience and Transform entering this market. If you look at the forecast of, uh, of the gallium nitride, um, you can see that um, it's mainly um, um, driven by consumer. So the consumer uh, includes the fast charger uh, application, of course. And you can see in the Q3 2019 and Q4 2019, this big jump in the consumer gallium nitride market, uh, mainly because of the of the adoption of Oppo uh, uh, for the for the inbox fast charger, and uh, of course this trend will continue as uh, Gamma tried has proven um, has proven reliable for for the for the for this application. The effect of the COVID is seen here, where we had our previous uh, forecast estimation uh, a little bit higher than uh, than than uh, than expected. Uh, of course, uh, this is due to the to some uh, budget restrictions uh, because of the innovative uh, fact of the Ganymart technology, and disruption in at every level also for, for customers, for partners, for suppliers, and a drop in the sales of the, uh, of the phones. Um, nevertheless, the penetration of Ganymart trend remains uh, the same, and uh, major OEMs will. Uh, at some point adopt this technology and this will give a push for the gallium nitride uh, segment. As we saw for the automotive for silicon carbide and, then, and here for uh, uh, consumer uh, for gallium nitride, we will see next in the next slides uh, the market trend for the, the lockdown. So yeah, let's now continue then again with the silicon carbide and we can say that as of Q2 2020, with the best available data and the industry feedback, we remain optimist for the adoption of silicon carbide in mid to long term. So it's really driven by the automotive applications, especially the main inverters. The total SIC device market revenues are expected to reach beyond um, $3 billion by 2025. And as you see, due to the pandemic impact and the lockdown measures, we expect a slight decrease in 2020, but an acceleration starting from 2022 to 23 is really expected. But if you have a look at our quarterly updated forecast, we will again see the same dynamic in terms of applications. But despite the slowing down uh, of the EV segments in Q2 or Q3 this year, we can say that in long term, the automotive will largely dominate the, the silicon carbide device market with, uh, say, around 60% of, of the total market. And another segment which drive, uh, drives the, the silicon carbide 
growth is the is in the industrial applications. Here we would include the applications such as power supply um, or UPS systems, but also the charging infrastructure with the EVHEV applications. So um, as you would imagine, driven by the adoption of the electric vehicles, the charging infrastructures, uh, infrastructure networks are being built uh, up now, and governments are really significantly investing in it. So in this context, we can say that there is an opportunity for silicon carbide. For example, the 1200 volt uh, SIC devices are of great interest for their high performance, and they're expected to be adopted in this segment in the next five years. So finally, this slide uh, summarizes, I think, quite well our understanding of the SIC device uh, market evolution. So historically driven by the, the PV, the photovoltaic, and also the power supply applications, silicon carbide is really penetrating more and more in the EVHEV market, but also in the charging infrastructure applications um, in the next five years. So here we also see the ranking of the silicon carbide device players in 2019. So in our understanding, the market leader, STMark Electronics, has benefited from its collaboration with Tesla on its um, SIC-based uh, main inverters, and they really significantly incre increased their revenues uh, over the last two years. And the leading players, Cree and Rom, have also invested significantly in the silicon carbide substrate, but also the silicon carbide device production capacity, it's really in order to meet the demand in the emerging uh, EV segments. And similarly, Infineon and OnSemi, on Semiconductor, are also in the race, uh, targeting both the automotive and the industrial applications. And in long term, allowing the further price reduction and let's say higher technological maturity, SIC is also expected to penetrate into higher power applications, such as the grid or the rail traction. So now let's understand what future is waiting for gallium nitride. Yes, Sergei. So um, as we said earlier, so a consumer is uh, the main driver for gallium nitride with a fast charger uh, application. So we seen we have seen like uh, many OEMs are interested in this uh, gallium nitride uh, technology, uh, such as uh, um, Bivo. Um, Xiaomi, those are um, challengers for the major OEMs and they want to differentiate uh, from competition by introducing a, a new technology and uh, uh, such as gallium nitride. So uh, gallium nitride offers um, high power density, high efficiency and small form factor and to introduce it in the in the inbox fast charger, uh, this requires a reliability. So as it goes uh, the penetration of the gallium nitride and the reliability of this gallium nitride technology proven itself, major OEMs will adopt it for the inbox fast charger, and that is why we will see more and more penetration of gallium nitride in the future. Uh, as a second application, uh, we will see uh, it will be automotive. So, if you take a look at the annually uh, market forecast. And uh, in this slide, for example, um, you can see that the consumer is the main dominant and the automotive will be introduced in the 2023 and 2024. So this is, um, this is a result of the maturity of the, of, the, of the technology and the price going down and the reliability of the technology. Um, uh, also, we see that uh, the, the market with which uh, $700 million of gallium nitride uh, device uh, by 2025. So if we take a look at the roadmap of the gallium nitride device market, you can see that uh, for the next five years, the automotive and the consumer will coexist. And starting from 2025, we will have this uh, change and expansion of gallium nitride to other applications such as uh, automotive and industrial applications. Uh, it will be also in, uh, introduced in the data centers and power supplies for EPS. We have seen uh, we have seen for many years now EPC uh, GAN system and uh, other um, uh, suppliers uh, in the market, and this will they, they will help the, the growth of Kalimar tribe uh, to enter the new area. Um, let's uh, take a look at. Uh, uh, the, the, the reports that we had uh, extracted for for this uh, for this monitor. So 
Uh, we have uh, this annual report of our GAN, EPTXC devices, application technology trends. We have also the power stick uh, for material, uh, it includes materials, devices, and applications. And it's an annual report also. And we have the status of the power electronic industry. Also, we have the power electronic for electric and hybrid electric vehicles. And we have also the status of the power module packaging industry from uh, from your the development. Um, the compound semiconductor monitor is a, is a quarterly updated monitor. Um, it, uh, it was launched in uh, Q4 2019. Uh, this service uh, includes uh, direct access to analysts. And uh, we, have, we have seen this PowerSeq and gallium nitride uh, uh, module uh, starting from, uh, from Q3 2020. Uh, we will include the second module, which includes uh, ARET gallium nitride and gallium arsenide. And uh, the gallium arsenide and indium phosphide optoelectronics module, which is module three, is under evaluation for the future. Thank you for your attention, and uh, we'll welcome you for any questions. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Esgi. So now let's begin the Q&A session. And we have indeed uh, a lot of questions. First one is, when does you all see the transition to eight inch silicon carbide wafers? Yeah, so maybe I can take this one. Thank you, David. It's an interesting one because um, in our understanding, actually, we don't really expect the 800, uh, sorry, eight inch silicon carbide wafers in the next two to two, three years, but more in four to five years time frame. Um, you can give the example. So over the last years, the eight inch has been demonstrated by the three leading substrate suppliers. I think many of you are already familiar with it. So Cree uh, 26 and also Cycrystal subsidiary of ROM. But in our understanding, the time to market of this high volume eight inch wafers it would be more in next 45 reasons. So there were uh, years. So there would be two reasons for this. So first one is more related to the substrate technology. So if you have a look at the history of the four inch and the six inch wafers, um, when you have the first demo to high volume, it took around a decade, let's say 10 years to go from the first prototype to the high volume market. Uh, so we would expect a similar uh, scenario for the eight inch. So the technology development is really needed. So we understand that according to the industry feedback, some fine tuning is really necessary for this. And the second part, I think it would be more related to the market needs. So and also the justification of the volume. So in our market forecast, as you have seen, we expect a real acceleration of SIC devices um, um, starting from 2020 or even beyond 2025. So the transition to eight inch in this case would make a lot of sense in order to support, support the, this fast uh, growth. Thank you. All right, uh, second question. What are the challenges of developing power again products and what are the techn technological trends for the next years? Um, yeah, I will, I will take this one. Uh, so for the power gun products, as we saw earlier, so it's uh, the main driver is a uh, consumer market. Uh, so the for the consumer markets, OEMs are defining the cost, the performance and the form factor of the, of the system. Um, so the main challenge will remain the price and the adoption rate. The adoption of this technology will lead to significant price erosion by the time when the major uh, OEMs will adopt more and more of this technology. Um, so to enable this high power density and energy saving in this system, while reducing the system uh, bill of material costs, integration is an obvious uh, technological trend. We see more and more um, solutions such as system in package and system on chip from suppliers uh, for example, like uh, Navitas and power integrations. And we also have seen um, some other uh, suppliers, um, not, not, uh, not eventually in the, in the consumer market, but uh, such as EPC who are offering, uh, who usually offer 
only discrete solutions, moving to uh, system on shape solutions. Nevertheless, for gallium nitride discrete solution, there is still an interest for higher power applications uh, for systems like uh, power supply, for example, of data centers, industrial power, um, automotive applications, and others. Uh, the volume for these discrete uh, gallium nitride uh, power systems will ramp up slowly with the penetration of gallium nitride in these applications, of course. Uh, the main players are Transform, Xperia, Infineon, and uh, etc. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, another question. How do you see this SIC module adoption and what is the status today? So this one, I can again take it maybe. Um, so yeah, I think it's good to have a look again on the history of the silicon carbide devices. So we have seen first the development of the diodes and then the transistors in discrete form. And today when we have a look or also in the future, we are seeing that silicon carbide is competing with the, the IGBT um, devices where the, the current rating is higher and power uh, levels are much, um, much more uh, higher. So in this case, yeah, we will see more and more power module development for silicon carbide. As of today, there have been uh, products, for example, for the EVHEV market. And in our understanding, uh, today it's still in early development. Um, and in next five years to come, we expect, uh, let's say, um, at least half of the market here really in market in value uh, to be dominated by the, the silicon carbide power modules, uh, which is also driven by the adoption in the EVHEV um, market. So thank you. Thank you, Esgi. So we have time for a last and quick question. Uh, there is a lot of questions, so we will answer the rest by email uh, after the webcast. So last question, what about the evolution of the GAN adoption in the data center applications? Yeah, again, I will, I will take this one. So uh, for data centers, um, so the reason, uh, so the data centers, the interest comes from replacing the bulky systems with a much smaller energy efficient one. So this will, um, given the capability of increasing by 5% in data center application and center capacity, which is very significant for, uh, for this application. Gallium nitride uh, can offer high performances and high power uh, density and faster switching speed. And we have seen that it can uh, decrease the volume uh, of this power supply by 30% in these data centers. In our opinion, of course, we see an increased interest for gallium nitride solution, which is already available. Um, Huawei, for example, are looking for internal solutions and many other GAN manufacturers such as Transform, EPC, Texas Instruments, um, gallium nitride systems, and Phineus are working closely uh, with power supply companies. Um, if we, in our uh, point of view, uh, the adoption of gallium nitride in data centers will depend very, very much on the regulations. The change will come uh, eventually from a push from governments to reduce power consumptions, for example, to go for um, greener strategies. In Europe, for example, we, we see, we will see, we're expecting um, a slow ramp up in the next two, three years, and maybe a significant uh, gallium nitride adoption in data centers starting from uh, 2023. Um, so we have seen a lot of uh, evolving regulations, uh, including stringent, stringent um, higher efficiency uh, recommendation for these uh, data centers. Yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Right. So the live market briefing is now ending. Thank you again, Ahmed and Esgi, for your time and analysis. Let me remind you that tomorrow you will receive a link with a presentation and recorded session. So feel free to share it to uh, your colleagues. Finally, let me remind you that uh, you can find on i-micronews.com all our products, which are market reports, teardowns, tracks, and monitors. Also feel free to contact us. Uh, if you have additional questions, you can have uh, our uh, contact information on the last uh, slide of the presentation. 
thanks thanks a lot for attending and joining us today have a good day bye bye